Good morning, fifth grade. For today, I'm going to go over the answers to chapter six, lesson four, and I'm also going to show you what to highlight in your book for your quiz. Don't forget, all quizzes and tests are open book, and you can use your book and any reviews that are posted on them. We want you guys to get the best grades possible. Okay, so for the start of lesson four, you had to explain why you thought e pluribus unum was a good motto for a country. Remember, that means out of many, one. Um, so you might have said it talks about us working together, how, you know, we might be many different states, but we're all one united country. So something like that. Um, so you guys in lesson four basically just learned about some th key important things that are part of the Constitution. Um, there are a lot of things you guys need to know on these first two pages, so make sure you highlight. So for your quiz, you need to know what popular sovereignty means. Popular sovereignty is basically the idea that power comes from the people. It's the idea that, you know, as a country, all the power that the government has comes from us citizens. You also need to know what civic responsibilities are. Those are your duties related to being a citizen. So that would be things like voting, following the law, showing up for jury duty if you have jury duty, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the other definition that you need to know for your quiz is rule of law. So rule of law basically protects citizens from the government's misuse of power. That's just a complicated way of saying, you know, the government can't just arrest people whenever they want or put people in jail whenever they want. They have to have, you know, evidence they committed a crime and we have to go through a trial and all that stuff. Um, you also need to know that the Supreme Court, their big job is they really decide whether fa laws follow the Constitution or not. Okay, that's their um, the big thing that the Supreme Court does. Um, so for number one here, you had to put a summary of what it means in the Constitution when it says establishing justice. Um, so you could have said that um, part of that is making sure that everyone's equal under the law. The Supreme Court makes sure that things aren't unconstitutional. You could have put that, um, making sure that everybody is treated fairly and protected. All right, moving on, um, you learned a little bit more about what domestic tranquility means. So that's just basically what are the different parts of our government that help to keep us calm and safe in our country. So we talk, you talk, you learned about the National Guard and how sometimes they can help during natural disasters. You learned about what the FBI does and that we also have things to protect our environment, like the Environmental Protection Agency and our national park system. And then you also, <coughs> excuse me, you also learned about providing for the common defense. So you need to know that the military are the ones that provide for our common defense. And then you learned about the different branches of the military and what they do to protect us. Um, so let's take a look at numbers two and three. So you had to write what you thought was going on in this picture. So here is a photo of the National Guard and they're helping clean up after an oil spill in 2010. Um, so you probably wrote, you know, how they're helping out. They're helping to make sure to protect the beaches. And then over here on number three, you had to put where each branch of the military operates. So Air Force, as I'm sure you guys already know, they operate in the sky. The Army fights on land. The Navy and the Coast Guard patrol our seas and our coastline. Okay, Navy can go all around the world to patrol. Coast Guard usually stays here in the United States and stays off of our coasts. And then the Marines operate both on land and sea. And then moving on, you guys read a little bit more about how the government promotes our general welfare and how there are different parts of our government that protect us from diseases and make sure our food is safe, make sure our cars and our products are safe. Um, and then for number four, you actually had to uh, answer why is... Uh, car safety or responsibility of the government. So they gave you a picture here of a crash test dummy. Um, and you might have written something about how, you know, us ordinary citizens can't tell whether a car is safe or not. We don't have the ability to test these things, but a government could test those things to make sure all of us citizens are safe. 
And then you guys also read a little bit more about how as our countries changed, we added more rights and different amendments in the Constitution to make sure that everybody in our country was being treated equally and fairly. So you learned about some different amendments that were added to the Constitution, specifically related to voting. Because as you guys know, when we wrote the Constitution in the late 1700s, pretty much it was just white men that had all the power. Women were not treated equally. Men of other races were not treated equally. So over time, our country has changed to give more rights so that everyone, men and women, regardless of your race, are treated equally. So I hope that you guys all figured out that in 1920, women gained the right to vote with the 19th Amendment. And then in 1971, that's when the 26th Amendment was added. So that dropped the voting age from 21 to 18. Because what was going on in 1971 is we were fighting the Vietnam War. And young men at the age of 18 were being drafted to go fight in this war, but they were not allowed to vote. And citizens thought that that was really unfair that we're asking these young men to go fight with our, for our country, and a lot of them are dying, but they're not allowed to vote in our elections and choose our leaders. So that's when the 26th Amendment was added and the voting age was changed to 18. Then you learned about some other amendments. Um, the 15th Amendment was added right after the Civil War, said that citizens were not allowed to be denied the right to vote based on their race. And then there were some other amendments. The 25th Amendment was added um, that basically said if the president leaves office, then the vice president would become president. Um, that was more just to make sure that we had a plan in place in case something happened to the president. So for number six, you had to compare the 15th Amendment to the 26th. So the 15th Amendment was about race. And the 26th Amendment was about age. So you could have said that they're both about voting rights, but one has to do with race, one has to do with age. And then you said uh, the question for number seven was how many present day states have to um, ratify an amendment to make it part of the Constitution? And that is three fourths. So three fourths of states have to ratify an amendment in order for it to be added today. Okay, for number eight, you had to describe two ways that the preamble affects our lives today. You could have put a lot of different things. You could have put, uh, you know, the military protects us, the government works to protect us. Um, you could have said the Supreme Court strikes down unconstitutional laws. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you could have put. Um, you could have talked about um, you know, everyone's you know has the right to liberty and the ability to vote and be treated fairly. And then for number nine, um, if our town was in danger of flooding, why would the presidents and the National Guard? Well, the president would send the National Guard to help us. Okay, we they might be able to assist, you know, help um, evacuate people if need be. They might have more supplies that our local government doesn't have. You know, that's what they're there for. They're there to help protect us within our own country and help us if we need help. Okay, so that's everything for lesson four. So don't forget to make sure you copy down my highlights. So remember the military provides for the common defense. And then you need to know what popular sovereignty, rule of law, and civic responsibilities are. And then you need to know that the Supreme Court decides whether laws follow the Constitution. So for the last part of Chapter 6, this is going to be for... Uh, Thursday is going to be for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So you're going to have three days to complete the review. So you guys need to go through and do the reviews for all the lessons. So go back, use your book. It should be pretty easy. Um, and then you're going to turn all this in on Friday. Don't forget to take pictures of your pages. Some of you are still turning in your work, but there's nothing attached. So make sure you're taking those pictures and attaching them. Okay. So you're going to have three days to complete this. Okay. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Your quiz for lesson four is going to be on Friday as well. Okay. I hope everybody's doing well. And if you guys have any questions or you need any help, email me.
Bye, guys.